Hi guys, welcome to my video. I hope that you will find it helpful. If that is the case, then please subscribe and like so that we can keep this resource for free. Thank you. So when we, what is a capital budgeting technique? It means before we're going to invest money in anything, we need to know, is this investment worth our while? Because really, if you're going to buy a fantastic, your doctor, okay, and uh, you're going to buy a fantastic diagnostics machine, it's going to cost you five million, okay, you need to know, is that machine going to pay you back over the period? Now, using a doctor is a bad example because the answer is just simply yes. If it doesn't, you say, I'm going to charge three times, 300 times medical aid. Okay, percent or 300% of medical aid and you sort it. Okay. But in, in a business, it could happen. Maybe that machine will give you a return on investment of 7%. Um, really, if you can get, put the money in the bank and get eight, what, why would you even have be in business? Okay, so, so especially when you're talking about equipment, if you're going to invest in equipment, you must be able to get out of that equipment what you wanted from it to start with. So that's the idea. So I said that any, any capital investment must make more money for the business than it would have got if the money was simply put in an investment account. Because really, if you put in an investment account, that's the easiest thing to do. Okay. I.e., the required rate of return will always be more than the current investment rate. Now, that required rate of return is a subjective thing, not objective. So if you say, you know what, I want my money to grow at 10% and I know inflation is 5%, then you can say, you know what, the, the, for me, the rate of return must be 15% in this business. And then you go and you do your calculations on 15% and you say, ah, oh, no, this is working wonderful. Or you know what? This is not working for me. So um, rather than not invest in the business, keep the money in the bank. You do understand that at this moment in time, part of the biggest problem that we have in the South African economy is that big business are sitting on their money. So it's not like there's not money. Okay. There's the, you almost cursed. There's a lot of money. Shouldn't, shouldn't do that when I know I'm recording myself. There's a lot of money, okay? But the money is in bank accounts. That's why the financial sector is still doing okay. Okay, so uh, money in the bank is actually in an economy completely useless. Doesn't help anybody at all. Money must get into the economic cycle. And only then is it actually making more money or it's adding value. Um, have you ever looked at a banknote? It's not some, I don't really carry those around anymore because I always carry a card. Um, but I don't know. Banknote? A banknote. Yeah, I don't know if you've, so here's a 50 rand. Now, now you do realize this is a piece of paper. No, no, you can see it, Shaquille, I know. And, and this piece of paper um, has got a signature on it. Uh, who signed it? Let me just see. Uh, oh. Okay, he signed it. Wonderful. The governor of the Reserve Bank. And this piece of paper in itself is worth nothing. It's nothing. But I won't tear it because I can still exchange it. What gives this note value is the fact that the governor of the Reserve Bank is giving me a guarantee. In fact, he's promising. That's why we call it the promissory note. He's promising me that in the South African economy, um, this piece of paper can still be traded for things worth 50 rand. That, and that's all. Okay. So when I put it in my wallet, it's not contributing to the economy at all. But if I go and buy ice cream afterwards, then it's contributing to the economy. Okay. So, so um, there's a reason. It's not necessarily a good one, but there's a reason why the government is proposing something like a basic income grant. Okay. Because now see, it's saying, where's the money going to come from? Um, there's no real money. And I want to give people a basic income grant. They need to put money into the system so that can, there can be a flow. 
And as long as companies are sitting on their money, the money is not going into the system. So um, it's really, look, uh, because government didn't do over the years what they promised, they're now kind of between a rock and a hard place. You need money in the economy. It's not there. Business is sitting on it. Um, you, For some reason, they never think about a windfall tax on the state-owned companies that actually make money. Um, okay. We, so, so, please, when you read the news, you do understand that it's not quite as bad as the newspapers and, and, and online media makes it out, because obviously they're trying to sell newspapers and, and, oh, it's okay, doesn't sell a lot of things, okay? So you need to say, no, no, it's terrible. Um, we are going to experience an economic crash tomorrow, then people buy your newspaper or do or, 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 or the actually buy the online subscription that you're selling it. So it's not so our economy is really not doing well. But it's not as bad as as the newspapers or the online platforms make it seem. Okay. And and there's a simple reason for that. Um, South Africa is a resource based country. So in bad times the miners just don't mine. And in good times, they start mining again. Or now it's bad times, but the mines are still mining because um, China got out of COVID before we did, and so there's an ask for our products. So, um, so, so we are not a labor-intensive country like some other countries are, which is a pity, because that's why we have a terrible joblessness. But um, we are a resource-intensive country, and so, I mean, the resources are in the ground. It's not like the gold is going to get up and back up and go by itself. Whenever we're ready to mine again for any any commodity, we just do that and and, and we sell that on the international market. And uh, and that is why the, while the economy has been decimated and uh, what we're looking at, 50% unemployment, government actually made the tax target. It's because of taxes on the mines. And I'm not an economist, okay, not at all. <laughs> um, it's way more complicated than I try to explain now. But the bottom line is, if we are going to invest in any machinery or equipment, we actually want to make money from it. People do not invest in machinery because they want to make the world a better place. They do it because they actually want money. Um, it's 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 a matter of economics, and when we discuss it in this this subject, we we pretend that we are in a completely free market society. So in the textbook, this part of the textbook, we are looking at absolute free market economy. The government is not going to come in and take the machine at some point, so don't worry about it. Okay. So now we have these three techniques that we can use to tell if indeed we are going to make of the money that we want. So the one is the net present value technique. And it answers the following question. It says, how much more will future returns be worth than the amount invested today? So we're looking at the time value of money, and it's really a better win. Let's just say it's a better technique it's more accurate than the next one. The next one is the payback period technique. And it answers the question, how long will it take before we recover the initial investment? It ignores the time value of money completely. But it's sometimes a better one to use if your investment um, area of your, of, or your investment um, climate is very risky. Because in a risky environment, you just want to make your money back as quickly as possible. And, th and that's why you do it. Okay. And then we have the internal rate of return. Now, let me just say, there was no way for me to change it because this is the way the ICB is going to ask you. They actually give you, this is a question, an exam question, it's always there. Okay, that little table. The internal rate of return is not really a capital budgeting technique in itself. It is the next step of net present value. So net present value only says, is it going to work or not? Internal rate of return says, what must that NPV be exactly? 
So that is what it does. What rate are we actually achieving on the capital investment that we made? That's the question. OK, now let's have a look here at the net present value technique. OK, it says the following. Here's a manufacturer and he considers buying a machine for 253,000. That's the cost of the machine. 15% fat is included. And he expects the following capital inflows exclusive of that. Expectation, so this is this is his budget. He says, I expect that in year one, I'm gonna get in 60,000 rand from this machine. In year two, 70,000. In year three, 80,000. That's when the machine reaches its optimum capacity, and then it just goes a bit back because this machine really has a five-year lifespan. 70,000 in year five, 60,000. Ah, oh, 70,000 in year four, 60,000 in year five. So basically, he's expecting a little curve like that. Okay. He also expects that he will be able to sell the machine that he's buying now after five years for 30,000. Basically for parts. OK, and he says that the cost of capital, which is exactly the same as the his uh, required rate of return. Is 15 percent, so the cost of capital is the sorry, sorry, the required rate of return plus the interest rate. OK, that is the cost of capital. That is what he wants. OK, because he wants to beat interest and he still wants to make to make to 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 make a decent uh, profit. OK, now. In the first row there, we put the number in brackets to indicate that it's negative. Obviously, initially it's an outflow of money. So if you didn't want to use brackets, you could have used a minus. I don't care whether you use a minus or whether you use brackets. OK. And as I say that, I I. I'm actually trembling in my in my shoes. And I'll tell you why. This the silly thing that's come up with the ICB now, where they expect you when you do calculations just to complete the field. And you might say I put a minus and then they were looking for brackets or put black brackets and they were looking for the minus. And then nobody thought of giving two options. Don't know that's the case. Uh, I, I'm just saying it should not matter whether you use brackets or whether you put a minus. OK, so that's your cash outflow. It is now. OK, so the present value is just the amount. It's nothing else. OK. So initially I am spending 220,000. Then I expect an inflow of 60,000 in year two. Or in year one, end of year one, I'm expecting uh, expecting an income of sixty thousand. But that sixty thousand, because of interest and because of inflation, okay, is not going to be worth sixty thousand rand. It's going to be less. Okay, if you don't know how that works, then I please do the following: look at the price of bread today. Then take the money for that price of bread. And and put it in a little envelope, né? and then put a date on it a year from now, and then a year from now you take out that little envelope and you go to the to pick and pay and you say I want the bread and you offer to put to pay that price. They're going to say to you, no, that's not the price. It's increased. It's now more expensive. So, so time value, time money has a time value. It's always worth less in the future than what it is worth now. And then you do this calculation. In year one, you divide that 60,000 with 1.15. Okay, why 1.15? Well, one plus what other, whatever the, the your cash cost of capital is. If your cost of capital was 20%, it would be 1.2. If your cost of capital was 10%, it would be 1.1. 1 .1. But now your cost of capital is 15%, and so it is 1.15. Also, please notice here that in this first row here with the actual, it was 220, and 220 is simply the VAT, the amount exclusive of VAT. So also there I went and I said 253 two, divided by 1.15. In this one, it is just per chance that the cost of capital 
and the VAT is the same thing. It's it's a box, okay? Please don't think it's a rule. Just just by chance here, okay? Then in year two, I have a capital inflow of seventy thousand. Now I divide it with one point one five to the power two. Not just two anymore, one point one five, but to the power two. Why? Because the, the it, it it's got this compounding effect. Okay. So when I do that calculation, I get to fifty two thousand nine hundred and thirty. At the end of year three, I expect eighty thousand to come in. Now I divide it with one point one five to the power three. If this confuses you, think year one to the power one, because that's just the thing, year two to the power two, year three to the power three, and so forth. Okay, it's not like you can really make a mistake. In year four, 70,000 divided by 1.15 to the power four, and in year five, 90,000 divided by 1.15 to the power five. Please go and play on your calculators, like I always say, and make sure that you get the correct answers. So now what you do, Please now, guys, at the end of year five, yeah, just pay attention here. At the end of year five, it is not just the 60,000 that comes in. You must also add the 30,000 that you expect to get for it when you sell it for parts. That's why the amount there is 90,000. You divide that by 1.15 and you get 44,000. 745. Now you simply add all the amounts, remembering that the first one was negative. Now here's the bottom line. If your answer is positive, it means that the rate that you are getting is more than the 15% that you hoped for. And if it is more, then you say, it's okay. I can consider this project. If it is negative, you stop right there and then. You don't even consider going on with the project because it's not beating your rate of return. Okay. Now, it could be that you see it's negative and you say, you know what, maybe my expectations was a little high. Maybe I should drop my expectations and then you can try and calculate it for a lower rate. Okay. But in this particular case, it stops there and it is positive so we can consider it thank you for watching this video to the end if you found it valuable please subscribe and like thank you